Good morning, friends, and as we are gathered again for worship, it is good to be together. It is good to be able to meet together and to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we have just entered into this this time of worship, I want us to really focus on the words of that course as we just led into worship. As we are gathered, Jesus is here. He is with us this morning, friends. And he wants to touch. He wants to heal. He wants to cleanse. So as we come into this this time of worship this morning, let us open our hearts and our minds and let him be Lord of our lives and let the Lord Jesus Christ give us the blessing and the peace that he desires as we open our hearts to him. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we do thank you, Lord, that we can meet. And we are meeting again in person. And as the congregations begin to return to worship, we pray, Father, that we, be, we return with a desire in our hearts to worship afresh, with a desire in our hearts, Lord, to go deeper, to seek you with a, a new vigor. May we, as we come out of this lockdown, Lord, as we meet to worship you this morning, may we really begin to take you serious because you have taken us serious and you have given your life so that we have the opportunity of repentance and eternal life. Lord, meet with us this morning now as we worship you. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The reading is taken from Psalm chapter 40, verses 1 to 10. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet in a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, O Lord my God, are the wonders you have done. The things you planned for us, no one can recount to you. Were I to speak and tell of them, there would be too many to declare. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but my ears you have pierced. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you do not require. Then I said, Here I am. I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will. O oh my God, your law is within my heart. I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly. I do not seal my lips, as you know, O oh Lord. I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. I speak of your faithfulness and salvation. I do not conceal your love and your truth from the great assembly. When we opened the church last Sunday, many of you possibly had concerns. Would it be safe? Would we be able to maintain social distancing? How could we enter and leave the church safely? Would we need masks? And the church worked hard to alleviate those fears. And we praise God that everything worked well. Everyone who came to church testified indeed that they felt safe. But for me, 
For me, the bigger concern, or the greater concern for me, was how would we get through the worship experience without singing? How could a Methodist service progress without singing, without music? Because I love music. Music is is a huge part, a huge part of my worship experience. Music and singing brings me into that deeper place. It brings me closer to God. How, how can I not sing? How can I not praise the God who saved me? And that is our theme for this week. As we continue our series on the new life in Christ, the new life, we are focusing this morning on the song of the new life. You know, when it comes to a saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we as individuals have a lot to sing about. We have a lot to praise. And we get, a, we get an insight into this new song when we look at the life of David. In Psalm 40, David gives us concise reasons for this new song. It's a song of deliverance. Listen to what David says. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. There's always something really refreshing in looking back at a difficult time in our lives. Especially when that difficult time is past. When we're looking at that difficult situation from a place of restoration, a place of safety, a place of healing. It is refreshing to recall those steps that we took on the road to wholeness. That's what David is doing in Psalm 40. David had obviously been in a dark place. David had obviously been in a difficult situation. His terminology that he uses is graphic. He calls it a horrible pit. He was bogged down in miry clay and there's nothing he could do about it. He was rooted. He was in a situation that he was helpless to get out of. He couldn't get out in his own strength. You know, that makes me, reminds me of the quicksand that we see in the feature films where the person walks into this quicksand and begins to sink. The more he moves, the quicker he, he, he goes into the, the depths. All he can do is remain still and cry out and wait patiently for someone to help. This, <coughs> friends, is the situation that David found himself in. He was helpless and all he could do was to wait patiently and cry out to the Lord. And the Lord faithfully heard his cry. Remember, David is looking back at this situation. He's speaking from a place of safety and contentment. Yes, he was in a dark place. He was in a a difficult situation. But in these verses, the important phrase for me was, he heard my cry. You see, that's the comfort that we have this morning, friends. That's the reason why we exist as a church. God has heard our cry. And that should be reason enough to sing his praises. But to use simple logic, 
David would have been rooted in that place. He would have been in that horrible pit. He would have been bogged down in that miry clay unless he cried out to the Lord. He had to cry out to the Lord for help. And that's the situation with us today. God is faithful. And the whole point of the gospel is that God wants to move in our situation. He wants to move in our difficult difficult times. He wants to bring healing. He wants to bring restoration. He wants to bring wholeness. But we have to cry out. The reality is, friends, that every single one of us are in that situation. We're in that horrible pit. We are in that miry clay. And we are helpless to do anything about it. It is called sin. And we are helpless to do anything about it. And we need to cry out to the Lord. There is only one way of escape, and that is crying out to the Lord and to wait patiently for him. And he will. He will lift us out of that pit. He will take us out of that miry clay. Because that is who God is. That is the loving, saving, restoring, healing, faithful God that, that, we, that we serve. We have his promise, friends. The promise that says, All who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is the faithfulness of our God. And we need to call out today because he will deliver us. David's was a song, a new song. This new song is a, is a song of deliverance. But this, this new song is also a song of direction. David says, he also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock. David's confidence is not based on the fact that he has been taken out of a horrible pit. It's not based on the fact that he's been taken out of the miry clay. His confidence is where he has been placed. He has set my feet upon the rock. That is the foundation that David needed. That is the, the place he needed to be. That was a place of assurance, a place of safety. You know, friends, the world today is morally adrift. The world today is in chaos. The world today is drowning in sin and wickedness. It is shifting. I am so grateful that we have an unshakable rock in the midst of a shifting world. There is no solid ground in the world, friends. There is no place of safety. There is no place of stability. There is no place where we can put our feet and not slip. There is only unstable, unsure ground. Things are changing all around us. They're changing almost day by day. The reality is perceptions are changing. In the world today, uh, we no longer call sin, sin. Today, wrong is no longer wrong. Today, we have a motto in the world that live in whatever way pleases you. Do whatever pleases you. Follow whatever lifestyle you will. And to be aligned to that world 
view today is to be living in unstable ground. In the parable of the the house built on the sand, both houses would have looked well. But the house that was built on the shifting sand, once the rain came, once the storms came, once the trouble came, it moved, it collapsed, because it wasn't built on a sure foundation. There was no solid foundation. And friends, today, many people are building their lives on a non-solid, unsure foundation. Many people are looking for stability in the wrong places. And you will never find it in the world. But the rock that David was placed upon has never moved. It hasn't moved from the beginning of time and it will not move until the end of time because that rock in which David was, was, found, was, was set upon is the Lord Jesus Christ. In, in him there is safety, there is healing, there is security, there is assurance, there is comfort, there is peace. He, he is the rock that we can shelter in times of trouble. He is the rock in which we can take refuge when the storms of life come. As the words of the hymn say, says, on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. So this new song is a song of deliverance. It is a song of direction. And friends, it is a song of devotion. Look at verse 3. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it. And fear. And will trust in the Lord. This is is the progression of Christianity. Deliverance to direction to devotion. We're delivered from the, the miry clay, the horrible pit called sin. We are set upon the rock. We are directed to the place of safety, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are given a new song of devotion. When we are giving the assurance of salvation, there is a new song in our mouths. When God created us, he created us to love him. He created us to have fellowship in him. He, he created us to express ourselves in worship and praise because our ultimate goal is to glorify the almighty God. God desires worship. God deserves praise. You know, friends, we were cre created to sing because where there is worship, there is witness. This is what stood out in the first century church. Praise and worship was on their lips. Devotion was very much in their hearts. And they were not afraid to shout that praise. They were not afraid to sing out. And indeed, they were affecting those around them. They knew that they were delivered. They knew that they were, they were saved by, by grace. And they allowed themselves to be directed. 
And this song of worship and praise was in their hearts because singing will always imply satisfaction. You know, when I sing, and I sing a lot, thankfully around the house, um, quite often there is no one to hear me. But I will sing in the car with the gospel music uh, in, the, in, in the car. I will sing in the bathroom. And, and quite often in the kitchen, me and my great friend, Alexa, will be beaming out worship music as I go about um, my tasks. And I have a reason to sing, friends, because I am redeemed. I am, I am set free. I am destined for heaven. And if that isn't a reason to sing, well, what is? The reality, the, the reality for the believer this morning is that the noise and the darkness of the horrible pit of sin has given way to the assurance of heaven. The silence of condemnation has been replaced by the shout of acceptance. Friends, we should all be singing this new song. And that should be our desire this morning. I read... I read yesterday about Charles Wesley. And Charles Wesley met a, a Moravian minister. And in the course of the conversation, the Moravian minister asked him, is it really necessary that I should openly confess Christ? Charles replied, if you had a thousand tongues, use them all to tell of our Saviour. Later, Charles Wesley penned this hymn, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the riches of his grace. Now the question this morning is, is that our situation? Have we a new song in our hearts? Have we a heart filled with praise? Because we can have this morning. Have we cried out to the Lord? Because if we cry out to the Lord, he will take us out of our horrible pit and he will set our feet on the solid rock, Jesus Christ. That, friends, is the song that I want us to be able to sing this morning. And I want us to be able to sing it with all our hearts. Let us cry out to the Lord and let him lift us out of that miry a horrible pit and set our feet on solid rock and let him give us that new song in our hearts and let us sing it in glory to the Lord Jesus Christ our Saviour and our King Amen Let us pray Father we thank you for this time it's been a special time. And Lord, we thank you for the, the, the music that we have played. And music indeed is a powerful way of bringing us closer to you. But we thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you, Lord, for the deliverance that you have lifted us, us out of that horrible pit. You have cleansed us. 
You have healed us and restored us and you have put us on our feet upon that rock which is Jesus Christ. That sure foundation, that foundation, Lord, that will never move. That unshakable rock, that anchor for the soul. And Lord, may we remain stead to him. May we remain stead to Christ in these difficult times. Father, there is so much in the world that we have concerns about. Yes, the, the coronavirus, Lord, is really gripping the, the world. It is causing fear. It is causing panic, Lord. But, Father, we trust in you. So give us the peace of God. Let that peace reign in our hearts this morning, Lord. And let our attitudes reach out to other people. Let other people see the faith and the assurance that we have. And bring them, Lord, into that place as well. You have given us a new song. A new song of praise. A new song of devotion. Help us Lord to sing that song with all our hearts this morning. Help us to continually lift up our, our voices to you. And even though we cannot sing in, 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 in person in church yet. Let our spirits sing out. Let our soul sing out. Let our, our inner being shout for joy. In the God of our salvation. Lord we pray. That you would continue with us. We remember those in our congregations. Who are. Sick at this moment. Who are in hospital. Who are in nursing homes. Those who are going through anxious thoughts. Those for whom this lockdown is starting to take take its toll let them know Lord that as a church we're very much there for them but Father more than that draw alongside them and, and let them know that the, the, the Prince of Peace himself is very much in their situation you have, you have promised us that you will never leave us or forsake us and you are faithful Lord to that promise so Lord, help us to go from this place. Help us to go with confidence. Help us to go with assurance. Help us to go with in peace. But Father, as we leave this place of worship this morning, help us above all to cry out to the Lord. And when we cry out to the Lord, we will be able to say like David, the Lord has heard my cry and has set my feet upon a rock. Father God, this morning, may we become more powerfully linked and attached to that rock. And may we live for you each and every day. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.